before we get into it, I would like to issue a disclaimer that the following video discusses sensitive topics related to body image issues that might be triggering for some, so be warned. I'm also not claiming to be an expert on any of the topics presented here. Simply put, I try to give you a rundown of the history relating to the themes of the subject matter. We live in a society where idealized fantasies of oneself are presented as reality. Depictions of heightened femininity and masculinity have a grasp on us from a very young age, long before we are fully formed, both mentally as well as physically. It has always been a topic of hot debate whether fashion dolls are able to influence children in a way that would lead to issues later on in their adult life. It's an ongoing discussion with studies as recent as one that had been published in March of 2021 being conducted every now and then. But are dolls really the root cause of dissatisfaction we might encounter with our own bodies? To start this conversation, we have to go back to the beginning, though it is hard to pinpoint when that was. We can start with the infamous 1965 slumber party fashion pack for Bobby and Mitch, including accessories such as a weight scale permanently stuck at 110 pounds. The standard Barbie doll is 11 and a half inches tall, giving a height of 5 feet and 9 inches at 1 6 scale, leading us to believe that she had a body mass index of 16.3, meaning that Barbie was critically underweight. Now how are you able to achieve a BMI like this, you might ask? The book the fashion pack came with succinctly says, don't eat. Through the eyes of an adult collector such as myself, it is a twisted yet quite amusing joke. Still, the harmful effect this could potentially have on children should not be undermined. As far as the public discourse of body dysmorphia, body image issues and related illnesses go, there basically had been none prior to the early 80s. Karen Carpenter of the famed sister and brother duo The Carpenters had fallen ill before America's very own eyes and died tragically young at the age of 32 in 1983 of the eating disorder bulimia. The disease had to claim a victim before the public at large would become aware of anorexia and treatments of diseases related to body dysmorphia would finally appear on a larger scale. Though the question remains, in what way is it possible that playing with dolls at a young age could affect a child in such a way that it would grow up developing a distorted sense of self? In M.G. Lord's book Forever Barbie, the unauthorized biography of a real doll, we get a glimpse behind the thought process of a woman recovering from anorexia who felt that other factors contributed to her eating disorder rather than idealized images of women portrayed by dolls. She says, when I was 15, I stopped eating. I'm 5 foot 9, and at my lowest weight, I was just under 100 pounds. I lost my period for 3 years. I wasn't allowed to watch TV until I was 13. My mother hated Barbie and what she represented. I wasn't allowed to have a Barbie, much less a skipper or a Mitch. And the irony is that I was severely anorexic as a teenager. Today, I have come to realize that my anorexia was a reaction to a very controlled and crazy family situation. And now, totally for kids. Fact. My thighs are too fat. My head is shaped like a melon. I'm ugly. I wish I looked like you. I think you're very pretty. The debate on whether or not fashion dolls had a bad influence on children was at its most heated in the early 90s. Toys, as well as children's media in general, was under a great deal of scrutiny. They use us to brainwash kids. They build us in a way that perpetuates gender-based stereotypes. Those stereotypes have a negative effect on children's development. After the release of Teen Talk Barbie, Mattel had come under fire from feminists and educationists alike. Most of what the new Teen Talk Barbie says is pretty harmless, considering the source, but some of the dolls are programmed to say, and I quote, math class is tough. It is sort of a terrorist act directed against children, and that did not seem appropriate. It seemed like a cheap shot. Even the animated TV show The Simpsons dedicated a whole episode to this frenzy. Let's find makeup so the boys will like us. <sighs> Don't you people see anything wrong with what Malibu Stacy says? What a lot of feminist critics of the doll tend to disregard in their assessment of Barbie and her body is the fact that the doll was created by Ruth Handler, a businesswoman at a time when there weren't any. I wasn't suited to taking care of a home. 
Handler knew what suited her was running a business. Her small company grew to become a giant, Mattel Toys. I was in a sea of men. Did the men in your company uh, give you a hard time? They either liked me or they had to go. And the doll's proportions were meant to be an act of defiance against men's expectations. And there were things the men definitely didn't like. Say, Ruth's idea for not just another baby doll, but an all grown up doll with very grown up features. They didn't think that a doll with breasts was uh, exactly appropriate. Why was it important to you that this doll have breasts? The whole idea was that a little girl could uh, dream dreams of growing up and every grown up that she uh, saw had breasts. Kids do eventually grow up, and if they are not able to live up to the dreams they had and ideals they imposed onto themselves, the mantra of we can do anything or you can be anything can run the risk of turning sour. The core idea could potentially lead to resentment and insecurities about one's own supposed shortcomings. That's what science journals build their argument on when they attribute a correlation of a doll's figure to body image dissatisfaction. A handful of such studies suggests that Barbie does have at least some influence on what girls see as the ideal body. A 2006 study published in the journal Developmental Psychology found that girls exposed to Barbie at a young age expressed greater concern with being thin, compared with those exposed to other dolls. Another journal published in 2010 described the results of a study conducted in the Netherlands, whereby food intake was measured after having young girls play with both a, what researchers call, thin Barbie doll, as well as an average-sized Emmy doll. At first it was believed that the girls ate less food when they played with the thin doll than when they played with the average-sized doll. However, closer inspection indicated that the girls ate more when they played with the average-sized Emmy doll instead of eating less when they played with the thin Barbie. The average-sized doll might have caused a relief effect, whereby a more realistically proportioned doll might have freed the girls from dietary restraint. M.G. Lord once said, Barbie was designed to teach women what, for better or worse, is expected of them in society. The study showed that it is more important to emphasize the effect that societal pressure has on children as the main component in the development of body image dissatisfaction than have toys they played with be considered the main culprit. Despite having handed over the brand decades before her passing, Ruth Handler remained an ambassador for Barbie and a role model for women trying to fight their way to the top in the patriarchy. With her passing in 2002, the facade that Barbie was the brainchild of a woman could not be kept up any longer, and it became clear that as far as the brand was concerned, it was mostly men who were in charge of decisions that were made. One of these decisions was to have Barbie be part of a multi-page spread photo shoot in the 50th anniversary swimsuit edition of Sports Illustrated in 2014. This photo shoot ended up becoming the straw that broke the camel's back. Barbie. Yes, Barbie is on the cover of the swimsuit issue. A first for this Wisconsin girl. The cover line, the doll that started it all. And as you can imagine, there is outrage. One mommy blog has this headline, quote, the Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue will feature Barbie so your daughter can feel bad too. Online outrage at the toy maker Mattel who paid for the spread. One woman posted... The negative reception of this publicity stunt Alongside fumbling sales of the doll, global sales of the doll dropped by 16% in the fiscal year of 2014, led to an overhaul of Barbie as a brand in 2016 that turned her into what she is today. Three new body types, curvy, petite and tall, as well as an endless array of skin tones and hair textures were introduced. The reception of the curvy body type in particular showed during focus group testings how even kids as young as 6 or 7 are already conditioned for a particular silhouette in the dolls. While the curvy Barbie was in a state of undress, children were giggling at the sight of the doll's proportions, showing how important such a change was to have generations worth of indoctrination be deconstructed and have kids in the future think of a curvy Barbie as just Barbie. Another doll that's simply beautiful. 
I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please leave a like or a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope to catch you in the next episode of Fashioned or Flashback.